I come from a very humble family, mm. right? Which is a very nice way of saying poor, mm. right? Um, <laughs> my, my mother was a vendor. Serious? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mother, my father was unemployed. Okay. Operating in Zimbabwe is a tough environment. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed a lot of people who say, and I, if you look at our social media, some people can actually think that it's impossible to build a business in Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah. What do you say about the economy? Mm -hmm. Do you think it was actually a blessing in disguise, or our economy is actually a curse, or is the reason why we are actually in business? How can I start business? But I only have a thousand dollars. What do you say to those kind of people? I would say business is brutal, right? If you're asking how you can start because I only have hundred dollars, then you need to go and look for a job. Mm. You see, because the only way to start is to start. Greetings Zimbabwe, greetings Africa. My name is Jerry Monya Zungu, the chartered vendor. Welcome to Ask Jerry, the chartered vendor. This is a podcast where we bring different entrepreneurs to speak about different topics and we also speak about sales and we also speak about business as a whole in our motherland africa so today i'm glad and i'm so excited because i'm joined by mr blessing who is actually the ceo or the managing director of a company called gravit roofing I, I can actually introduce himself he's here so this is mr blessing how are you doing i'm good i'm good thank you very yeah. much Mr. Jay. you can introduce yourself who is mr blessing okay yeah um, first of all thank you for having me great thank you for having me i don't i don't know if you knew that in the streets they call you the sales doctor did you know that? i didn't know that okay, i'll great. start calling myself that <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so like you said my name is blessed not mm. blessing actually this is blessed blessed yeah. I, I, okay i saved it as blessing Do you know all this time i noticed but <laughs> it's okay <laughs> uh, that's okay yeah, yeah so my name is blessed mm. um it's gravity mm. i be a roofing mm. that's what we do mm. normally uh focusing with roofing mm. that's what we do and um um age 20 i'm oh, sorry 32 i still feel young is it <laughs> you wanted to rig that one <laughs> yeah i'm 32 okay, now okay. right still, yeah, uh, still very young yeah yeah mm. i am yeah and um just talking about uh, me shortly right mm. i come from a very humbled family mm. right which is a very nice way of saying poor mm. right um <laughs> my, my mother was a vendor uh, yeah, yeah yeah and my mother my father was unemployed okay yeah he went through a health uh difficult health challenges to an extent that he couldn't go to work mm -hmm. i couldn't even work so my mother had to take the role of both being a wife mm -hmm. and also providing as a as a as husband a family, as a, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah i come from that kind of family and um basically that's what i can say okay yeah okay let's talk about entrepreneur how did you become an entrepreneur who you are today how did it start <sighs> Uh, the journey. Well, Where did you go to school? Did you go to university? How did you dream about gravity? I still remember when we met the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. It was not. Uh, it was not like this. Yeah, Today true. is glowing. <laughs> uh, Much better. That day, that, day, <laughs> that day had a lot of problems. Oh my god! And I'm like, you have no idea. How can I actually assist this man? But <laughs> the only thing I, I would tell, I would actually tell him is. If you continue doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. definitely to yield results. Thank you. Because by then okay. it is, uh, I think it was 2021 20, or 20, just 2021. Yeah, around that time. Around that time. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I still vividly remember meeting him. And I'm like, this is the actual stress of an entrepreneur. So when did this gravity start? Okay, so gravity started in 2018. Mm -hmm. That's when he started. That's when he actually registered the, the company, company, right? 2018. But before that, I was working at Delta, okay. right? So I did uh, apprentice mm -hmm. at Delta. Uh, so I'm a mechanical engineer by profession. Serious? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, you didn't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, that's why I did my training as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, got trained with Delta and worked for Delta. So at some point, I just felt like um, I just wanted to do more, you know? Because growing up from, uh, I always feel like I had a statement when you say. Uh, the way you want the things is is determined with the dogs that are chasing you. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens now is, so when I was growing up, we were not privileged to a lot of things. Okay, so where did you grow? Uh, in Chitungiza. Okay. That's where I come from. Chitang. Chitang. 
Okay. Yeah, that's why you even opened in Chita. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> As well. You're giving back to the community. hundred okay. percent. Yeah. So um because of that, you know, I always had this sense of wanting more, mm. you know, because we really didn't have much. Okay. You know, yeah. So I got an opportunity to work at Delta, but I actually left, you know, and then I thought, let me start gravity, mm. you know, which was by then it was the worst decision that I did. Yeah, because what I went through, like you said, the state has changed. That mm. it was terrible. Mm. It was terrible. So I remember um, 2018 when we registered, it wasn't Gravity, the construction company. Mm. It was Gravity, fresh fruits and vegetables. So Serious? I'd go, yeah. I did. <laughs> okay, tell us. Yeah. So okay. I'd go to Mbari, yeah. right? So buy these, you know, greens and, and all these things. So I was living in the avenues by then. Mm. So I'd bring them, right? And then repack them. And then we had to go and sell them at, um, at you know, this the, the, before those before it was pick and pay, it was just exactly. TM. Just pick, TM. Yeah. Exactly. So we'd sell them, but the problem, the challenge, was um, uh, it was RTGS by exactly. then. Exactly. Yeah, R, not Z. It was RTGS. <laughs> so you get back uh, the the as in RTGS uh, after buying with US because yes. if you go to Mbari, the awakupi ni 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 Z. Exactly. Yeah, when they US, yes. right? So mm. that's what we used. But then it didn't really work out. The profits, I had to pay rent, I had to feed, and I actually dropped from school so that my brother could, you know, continue. What what were you doing in school? Uh, engineering. I was, I was trying to continue. To continue with, yeah. the, with the degree or the diploma? It, it's a diploma. It's a diploma. Yeah. yeah. Poly. At Poly Bay. Mm. I read Poly. Mm. Yeah. So I thought, no, I, I should just stop this and then let my brother go continue. to school. Mm. Yeah. But then still, it wasn't working out. Then I, I met a guy, you know, I I should mention his name. He's called Kwaramba. Mm. Yeah. And then his 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 uncle was building. Mm. And then he sent us to go and buy cement, right? So I was like, I ah, know, let's go to Mbari. I know, you know, people buy cement in Mbari. Mm. So when we got there, we bought cement. It was cheaper, and the money he had given us was more. Okay. And then there was there was some profit there, you know. I thought, no, I think we should actually <laughs> be selling cement. Cement, not yeah, uh, not fruit not, and vegetables. Exactly. So it changed from gravity fresh fruit and vegetables to gravity uh, building. At first, so that's how. So you're also a vendor. I would say, yeah, I'm a vendor. <laughs> so how long did you do vending and selling uh, fruit, fruit and veg? Um, I think vending doesn't really stop. You still a vendor yourself. You just yeah, know yeah, the yeah, next level. True, at that yeah, level. Yeah. yeah, But if I may say, when you're selling uh, fruit and veg, it was for how long? Um, I think we did that for about um, six months. Six months. Six months less around okay. that time. Yeah. Right. So it worked out. Mm -hmm. If they paid it early, they had to pay us early. It, but then if they, they had to take long with the payments, then with the rates, it, it wouldn't make sense. So we had to switch. Yeah. And we switched into cement. That was a blessing. So I'm selling cement. Then I met a guy mm -hmm. in Bari. Mm -hmm. This guy was called Mukurunge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this guy was like, um, okay, do you know how much cement you have sold? Mm -hmm. He knew what I was selling. I didn't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was selling. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, you have sold the truck in a week. Serious? Yeah. And I think um, I can give you more cement. And but I need to know where you stay and everything so we can work together. I'm like, okay, cool. Then he gave me 200 bags. Uh. I sold them. He gave me more cement. I sold it. He gave me more. Then he trusted me with his cement. I started selling his cement. It was working for me. So it was US. Mm -hmm. So I'd get the US, get the you cement, get, get the, your U, profits, get the yeah. profits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But along the way, something happened. I think it was like six months, seven months into, into business. Uh, yeah. Cement business. Mm -hmm. So one guy called me like, look, I need you to deliver cement, 200 bags. Uh, the payment is in, is in town. And I'm like, okay, it's cool. I delivered the cement. They're like, okay, can you can just rush by net one building. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where my office are. Come and collect your payment. By the time I got there, his phone was off. Shh. By the time I went back, the cement had disappeared. Shh. 200 bags, that's over $2,000. And you're that, still starting. Stuff. And I'm just still starting. And I just didn't know how to tell this guy. And that was the first time I started getting into debt. And it was bad. Yeah. So how, how was the feeling when you're in debt? <sighs> um, I think one thing that will push you is just the vision that you have, you know, knowing that these things have happened. But the only way to get out of this is to keep doing it. So that's what I told him. Kudam darawana darawa cement. Exactly. Yeah. But the only thing that can help me right now is you have to keep giving me the cement couldn't go no cover cash because i don't have the money you know and like enough he he understood but then i was more careful from that time and 
yeah it, okay. it, it turned out to it be it was very tough yeah it was so from the cement how mm. did you manage to grow the business from from the days of cement and this guy you are now owing him money mm-hmm. how did you manage to recover from that because most of the people right now have got interpreters as well out there mm-hmm. were owing a lot of money yeah. they've been problem they're in debt 100% mm-hmm. what is actually how did you manage how did you manage to maneuver uh what i did now was when i realized that yes i'm selling cement but the profits were very low so the profits well he was getting his profit mm. and i had to get my profit from his profit mm. so i'd get a discount from him and try to exclude a little bit the the pricing of the cement to get the in between right the profit so it was very small so i said okay what else a company cement that i can also sell so i started to upsell even without knowing that i had to upsell mm. you know and then i started selling other things cement is like um like someone wants to cook sadza mm. right you you've got milli mill mm. but you definitely going to need a pot exactly. you're going to need water definitely, you're yeah. going to need stuff you know so that's what i did i knew if you've got if you want cement you definitely need whatever is following with cement that's uh, brick falls dpc for those that are be, that are being right now they know what i'm talking about mm. the black shit so thing so started also selling that. starting selling everything that accompanies cement okay yeah that's how i got to then to roofing okay mm. well, we're champions there now yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're now champions but yeah. let us take you back okay uh this was your journey and things were actually tough yeah did you ever, ever thought of quitting or you regretted why you actually left uh delta uh well the early days for a second yes i did yeah but then i think one of the drives was um the fact that i saw people that had been working for delta for over 3 5 15 20 years yes the in the normal world there is a change but what i was really looking at then no no but quitting yes i thought about quitting a lot so many times so many times but i think it's always about what's driving you what's chasing you the dogs the you dogs, know yeah. yeah so i didn't quit uh, even though i thought i had every reason to quit mm. but i didn't I okay. didn't. What can you term the lowest point of your time probably at Graphic to actually say this is what happened the day I didn't have anything what really what was your lowest point was it when you lost your cement or there's another where you actually say things were very tough I still remember <sighs> when we I was talking to you uh-huh. you once said at one point you actually owing rentals yeah things were bad yeah Uh-huh. So what happened? Um because remember I started in Bari, right? From Bari I went to Simon Mazorodi. Mm-hmm. From Simon Mazorodi then I got an office mm-hmm. at uh, Showgrounds, mm-hmm. right? When I got the office I had, I had sold the car that I had at that moment, right? Sold the car. Um I didn't have a car at that moment. Got the office, renovated the office, everything was just moving in my mind like this is it. Okay, because I was losing a lot of clients because this was the question I couldn't answer. Where are you Where located? Are you located? I couldn't answer that question. I couldn't. So, it was like an online business. <laughs> Briefcase. <laughs> yes. So I thought I needed an office to get proper proper clients. There's just one client that I lost. It was a lady. She came, she wanted deformed bars. They were worth about uh, 13,000 something. And like I, I need to come and see where you are located. And my my address on the invoice was just a flat where I was staying. And she came. <laughs> she came. <laughs> she came and and she sat me down. She said, "Look, young man, um if you really want to make it, you need to impress your clients." I'm not impressed. And she laughed. So I thought I need to get an office. So I did. I got the office. <sighs> But two months down the line I lost it. Why? Everything. How did you lose it? Well, I didn't do a proper background check mm. to say. So this office was owned by um Traffic Safety, mm. right? Of Zimbabwe. Yeah. They owned, but they were not using the building for like seven years. So when they heard that the building has been given to someone else and it's been renovated, they came. They had the lease, they had everything it was their building. And they fought me. Like, no, you need to call your boss, we need to see you. like, look, you're talking to the person. I, I look, I don't have. I need this office and I lost, lost it. it. Yeah. From I, there from traffic from this office where did you move? It was in the same compound like um to the business um um set center where is showgrounds. It? Oh, showgrounds. Okay. Yeah. So it was in front if you know uh opposite know, yeah, yeah. yes. That's where the offices were. So we lost them. And then I went back home. I stayed home for about I think three three months and Seriously? just went back to the 
same way that I was selling online like, business online <laughs> business you know but I just want to appreciate the then CEO uh of of Showgrounds who is now in a minister now the, the yeah um he said to me look I, I've seen you come here so many times and we hear that you also invested money there just keep trying uh I'm sure you get a place for you so the guy called Fungai in the marketing department he got me a building where we are right now mm. yeah it's way behind but I didn't know it was a blessing in disguise because that building now is literally ours like we own the building uh the lease we have the lease for uh, i mean we always sign it over 10 years every after 10 years mm-hmm. we sign the lease yeah so it's 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 incredible we have our own place now and we're operating that's yeah. good that's mm-hmm. good so thank you so much i think we actually to cut it short right now and to actually come after the break to discuss more on how you managed to navigate through the uh jungles of entrepreneurship it's hard it's tough yeah it's not for the faint hearted i think mm-hmm. even elon musk has actually said when in entrepreneurship it's like you're eating glass just think right. about eating glass <laughs> and uh that's how entrepreneurship is so we just take a short break thank you so much guys for 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 actually watching and also listening to this podcast you, you this program is actually sponsored by gravity and mnj So thank you so much. Continue watching. As we celebrate 10 years of building timeless businesses, MNJ would like to take this opportunity to honor and celebrate our valued clients. Over the years, we have grown together, creating partnerships that have transformed dreams into reality. We don't just celebrate our achievements, we celebrate the trust you've placed in us. trust that has made us your partners partners in starting and establishing your companies and partners in navigating the challenges of business we've been your partners in investing in zambia south africa and other countries helping you tap into new markets and opportunities for sustainable growth and future partners in ensuring compliance with local laws and regulations and partners helping you grow sales revenue for your company we've also been partners in establishing strong hr policies that will not only help your organization but will also help you to attract the best talent of course we've been partners in embracing technology helping you to acquire and implement best solutions that can increase your efficiency and productivity in your business here is to many more years of building long lasting brands businesses that endure for generations to come here is to 10 years of building timeless businesses with mnj Welcome back. You are watching Ask Jerry the Charad Vendor and I'm hanging with Mr. Blessed. Yes. Is his name? Madzivanyika. Madzivanyika because I didn't want to pronounce it wrongly as well. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we are before the break we're talking about where you are right now. Mm-hmm. And what do you think is the biggest secret why the business is still standing and the business is growing because operating in Zimbabwe is a tough environment. Mm-hmm. I've interviewed a lot of people who say and I've if you look at our social media some people can actually think that it's impossible to build a business in Zimbabwe. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. say about the economy? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's actually a blessing in disguise? or our economy is actually a curse or is the reason why we are actually in business um well there's a chinese saying it says um you see where there is um crisis mm-hmm. they see opportunity mm-hmm. you see they're flocking in africa because there's a lot of crisis yeah yeah we yeah, are yeah. leaving because there's a lot of crisis as you are saying that uh this is the day I was at the airport mm-hmm. i'm watching zimbabweans living in yeah. numbers yeah getting into uk mm-hmm. uh getting into australia but as i was also coming back huh mm-hmm. it was almost 90% foreigners <laughs> mostly chinese coming coming into zimbabwe yeah yeah so what what do you why what do you, what do you think about our mindset what what is that the chinese can see what we don't see ourselves um you see i think what has changed over the years which some have noticed is what we learn from our fathers and our forefathers we appreciate that honestly but it's not really applicable in the now right now you see because 
when I'm China, you see small kids mm -hmm. or like in videos. You exactly. See, they are creating, they are designing, they're designing, they are making stuff, right? Not saying bad about Kwedi Zuzu. You know, when I'm digging a show and me, I should say they understand. It's, it's good. <laughs> Spirituality is amazing. I'm a very special person. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think it's all about <laughs> the mindset itself, right? Uh, what do we really want to create? You see, we, we don't come from families where we we learn about business, we learn about finance. Mm -hmm. These things we learn dig. You see. So like, uh, I think it's all about the mindset, um, you know, the people you you are around, and that that's that's what seeds the next thing that you want to do. Mm. Great. So you're actually saying the, in in Zim, I think there are a lot of opportunities which are there. Yeah. Because I, I strongly believe that it, it's it's a gem, Zimbabwe, but sometimes you need to don't listen to negativity and focus on the what what mm. is actually going on in the economy and there are big opportunities there many people are doing all we've got many uh they've actually the self-made millionaires mm -hmm. some of them are even billionaires yeah they're silent in the economy mm -hmm. so on that one what do you think it's uh how did you manage what's your skill when you're actually hiring your team i've noticed that you've got uh some of the some of the people they're very good mm -hmm. very very good excellent people what's your hiring how do you hire people do you hire them based on education or you hire them based on skill how do you hire people of course skill is is, is, is important mm -hmm. you need someone who's very skillful mm -hmm. skillful to to i mean to execute the work mm -hmm. but also attitude you know attitude exactly. goes back to mindset mm -hmm. you know uh exactly exactly the next thing is they can you see so i think that's what i've used over the time attitude first mm -hmm. yes your attitude towards your own work your attitude towards yourself mm -hmm. you and, see. and if you have a high if you have a high someone into actually regret why you have actually had that so person. many times so many times uh -huh. I, I remember at one point you even helped me sometimes remember <laughs> <laughs> so many times and you you're hiring the wrong people mm -hmm. because sometimes we hire because um, we we look at the money that we want to give them, mm. and you go on. But then we also need. Mm, yeah. mm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So and also you need to hire someone who is very passionate, wanting to do. Hundred percent. Yes, mm. yes. That's that's the whole point. You mm. know, I passion. There's a guy who actually said passion can beat everything. Yes. That's okay. it. So, and then the education. True, we need education. You need to be very educated, which is self-development according to me mm. but it's not what we can use to say we need someone here we need someone there and i mean yeah mm. i've had many arguments with people whereby they still say a degree is very important in someone's life uh, and I, uh, I, I, I i i think my views are different okay <laughs> whereby i actually say uh you can have a piece of paper Mm -hmm. it's, a degree is not a problem mm -hmm. itself, but the attitude after getting that degree now will determine whether you're going far or not. Yes, because sometimes you can have a degree whilst you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So the best is you're supposed to learn even from those who don't. Yes, because if you notice right now, I think most of the successful companies, even worldwide, mm -hmm. these are people who never had they they didn't have any degrees. Nothing. And I don't know what's your view on that. Um, I really don't have any problem with education or mm. having a degree. You know, I'm I'm one person who's actually pursuing one mm. in, in in finance. Mm. I just took a break because of you know work and mm. not a break really, but I think pressure mm. was just too much. So I said, okay, what's most important? Business, money, mm. good. But I think a degree, it's okay to have one, but I think it's not something that must then. It's not success mm. at all. It's just part of self development, like just reading a book. Exactly. You know, like developing yourself. Developing yourself. It's all about developing yourself. Okay. Nothing to do with success. Okay. Simple. Yeah. But mm. we've been lied to mm. over the years. Or oh, it did work mm. at some point. But the world has changed. And we need to adapt. We need to accept that. And we need to accelerate in, in, in I mean, in a different way. We, we need to think differently now. Yeah. Oh, Entrepreneurship. Good. Selling, like you always say, I don't mm, think mm. you've recruited people with degrees yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a mixed bag. Some yeah. have got degrees, some don't. Because uh, I'm looking at it 
in a way whereby I think uh, I don't recruit a degree. Just I recruit, recruit your, your skill, your excellence, yes. your attitude. Mm-hmm. How have you been groomed? Mm-hmm. Who are you? Are you hungry? Are you creative? Yeah. Even if you've got a degree, um, I don't want to stereotype. You can have a degree, but you can be an excellent person, good attitude. I've got very good hires. Some people I've stayed with in the company for mm-hmm. five years, working with them, excellent delivering month in, month out. They've got degrees. Mm-hmm. But what I noticed is much of the people with what I've had before with degrees, they end up disappointing. Because they are always jumping from another job to another job. Mm-hmm. Number two, they feel like the paper is supposed to do work for them. Mm-hmm. So hence, there's no need for them to research. If they went to school, that's done. That's them. So, so that's where the problem, I'm thinking mm-hmm. that the young people of nowadays, if they realize that, mm-hmm. okay. so in terms of looking at your company, it's it's unique. Murukwita roofing, you're mm-hmm. doing IBR roofing and they've actually specified. Mm-hmm. And to say you also do building suppliers. Right. What can you actually say is your reason uh, why your company is where it is? Where is it really unique? If you're also probably communicating with the customers who are out there, who are probably doing projects, they're doing cluster houses. Or mm-hmm. What's your unique? Why you do think you're unique when you actually probably, when someone come and say, What's unique about Gravit? Why I should not deal with A and I should deal with Gravit? Okay. Um, Gravit, we're not only doing business, but we're also taking care of the client's investment. Mm. You see, this is the approach. Mm. When a client wants to put a roof, mm. Pamba, right? Roof, I'm going to roof ye, ye $300, $200. Exactly. We're talking about thousands. It's thousands. Thousands and thousands, mm. all right? So someone is investing. To mm. someone, it's an investment. Mm. To us, it's business. So our approach, is, our approach is different. It's not only business. It's also taking care of someone's investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the first thing that we do when we approach our clientele, right? They need to understand that we're here to help them. And then definitely quality is key for us. Right? Talking about the service itself. Right. We also have this guy who has really helped us. I don't know if you know him. Mm-hmm. It's called Jerry Moore. Oh, <laughs> you're just right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, I don't know him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, well, you've done well. Thank you very much, mm, my brother. No, yeah. No. So we, we, we get to understand that um, there is need for quality in everything that we do. There is this first service where we're looking for the client. We're talking to the client we sell. Then after service, we need to talk to them, you know. Mm, mm. So I think it's about the engagement that we have with our clients that is really done well. We have clients all over Zimbabwe at the moment. Mm. And how do you manage all those clients from... I noticed that you guys have one branch. And two now. Two now? Yeah. Where is the other branch? Okay. And she took visa. Yeah. Probably, yes. We've got branches in Harare. Yeah. How do you supply someone who's in Blahai or Mashingo? How do you do that? So there's a saying that says teamwork makes the dream work. Mm. So we have arranged a very unique way of logistics, right? We have a client recently that we serviced that's in Bitebridge. I hope one day okay. this, yeah, this guy can hear this. Uh, the roof costed about uh, 11,000 something. Okay. Yeah. We did this roof, right, mm-hmm. in Bitebridge. Right now we've got guys who are in Wangi doing work. And it's far. It's far, right? So we have a, a network of trucks, you know, people and drivers that we deal with. We deliver, we go, as long as you're in the borders of Zimbabwe, mm. at this moment for now, we're able to service you. Okay. 100%, yeah. Ah, that's good. But because you once did my, uh, I think the house, my parents' house in Otsomba. Otsomba, you see, yeah. yeah. So, and why probably I'm happy with what you're also doing is, you're also lifting a burden to some of the people who are busy. Yeah. Whereby I don't want to get into Mbare. I don't want the hassles of mm. Mbare. Can I be right? Yeah? Can I be right? Mm. You know what I mean? So, but when you look at it, you are actually taking the money, deliver everything. Yeah. I never had any problem with mm-hmm. that, which I think is thumbs up in terms of customer service and, and delivery as well. Thank you very and much. And what's the importance of sales in your business? When you uh, look at it, sales. Because uh-huh. when I think, I, I think most of the companies in Africa, we lack as far as sales is concerned we don't know that is the lifeblood of the is the mm. pulse of the mm. business and why wh- why do you think it's important in your business as is your business okay um i should say this 
there's something uh, called value, mm. right? If you want to create value, they say as an entrepreneur, you need to create value, right? So in simple terms, creating mm. value is mm. also increasing sales. Mm. I will tell you, when I started attracting people with that, we're ready to pour money into gravity mm. to say, look, we want to do this. Look, I think you're doing well. I think, you know, come here, let's talk. Mm. It's because they saw sales. That's where they identified value. That's all. So I think sales are like a backbone of a business. The more the sales, you can you can grow, you can scale the business from sales. Mm -hmm. When the sales are low, we can also determine where the business is going through sales. So mm -hmm. I think sales is a very vital uh, department mm -hmm. to say it's it's actually from from the top to the bottom. Everyone is sales. That's 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 it. Everyone is sales. Whether or clean or good tire, or not tingiza. Eh, or um, come from not tingiza. Eh, we can go forever. We not tingiza. Eh, talking to other guys, other CEOs, not going to tingiza. So everyone is sales. That's that's what we believe, and we also actually give commission to anyone, whether you're in sales, you're in operation, you're in accounting, from every department. You come with your own client yourself. You have to get something out of that because you have sold. So okay. sales to us is critical. It's very critical. It's backbone. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, what probably do you want to say to someone who is mm -hmm. out there? They're starting a business. Because when I'm looking at it, we started a business with literally nothing. Yeah. And what you had only was the market. That's all. If you look at it where you actually mentioned about cement, it started off zero. Zero. Nothing. So how can, uh, what do you want to say to someone who is out there? Mm -hmm. I've been asked a lot of questions about how can I start business, but I only have $100. How can I start this business, but I only have a thousand dollars? What do you say to those kind of people? I would say business is brutal, right? If you're asking how you can start because I only have hundred dollars, then you need to go and look for a job. Mm -hmm. You see, because the only way to start is to start. That's it. Mm -hmm. Simple. You have to start. Just start. What do you want to do? Now, it's, it's actually becoming easier now because you also have the social media, but it's also becoming also competitive with what your, your content as well, right? So, if you want to start, I believe someone just has to start. And when you start, you don't have to give up because when you give up, it's guaranteed it's not going to work. And okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, also, so so that's that's your view. So you think someone can actually start without any money? Yeah. Okay. You don't need capital to start. In fact, capital is in different ways. Yeah. Definitely. It's in different ways. There's capital as in cash wise. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's capital as in referral. It's a good capital. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's as if you're reading my mind. <laughs> okay. So when yeah. you look at that and um, you look at uh, our young people mm -hmm. who are out there, what do you want to say to, 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 to entrepreneurs out there? People are probably thinking of quitting. Mm -hmm. People are thinking of surrendering. Mm -hmm. People are thinking that Zimbabwe is brutal and better off with uh, getting into UK, mm -hmm. doing other jobs there. What do you want to say to them? Um, I think the first thing is they need to understand something. Like, no one is coming to save you. Mm. No one is coming. There's a book by Arthur. By Mara. Arthur Mara. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, Advocate, right? Uh, he said, no one is coming to save you. And it's true, you see. So what you need to do, because your father didn't leave nothing for you. Your grandfather didn't mm, leave nothing mm -hmm. for you. So the only thing you have to do is to create value. Mm -hmm. There's a book by um, Mudiwa Hood. Mm -hmm. He said, where you come from has nothing to do with where you're going. Where you're going. Success is an inside mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And because we are we are, we are our worst enemy mm -hmm. in everything that in we everything do. We yeah. Do. So you find out sometimes what you want to achieve, you can't achieve it. Of course, you can find excuses, you know, but the main reason is yourself. So I think what I can say to people out there that I want to start, that are struggling, they need to accept the truth that no one is coming to save me. I have to do this and I'm by myself, I'm alone. And the only way to do this is to create value. Find ways to create value. You attract who you are. Mm -hmm. It's it's so true. It's true. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, is it Bill Gates who once said, if you're born poor, that's fine. But okay. if you die poor, it's on you. Then you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he said. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> In short, that's yeah. what he just said. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not, your, it's not on you. Because mm -hmm. you grow up, you are supposed to be the lie. The world has got a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of probably reading books, uh -huh. are you someone who's a reader? Yeah, I believe. And, um, how to, which books are you reading? I believe leaders 
are readers. Mm-hmm. I've heard that statement, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So you also need to read books about uh, how to speak to people, right? How to influence other people, you know, how to talk to people, to get people listening to you. It's important. You don't get these skills from school, right? You read about leadership, mm-hmm. right? You know, John Maxwell is a, is a very good uh, author in terms of leadership, right? Um, so, and also there's this guy, you of course, <laughs> 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 at one point, um, you also told me that, um, you know, you can also turn your car into a library, li- library just when yeah. you're driving. Kai, we can call it Kai University. Oh, Kai University, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I also have um, a mentor, you know him, right? Yeah. Uh, Reverend yeah. Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. He's also a very strong reader. Strong reader. Serious reader. So he also gives me a book to read. So, I mean, I'm privileged to have people around me. That, ah, uh, that's good. So always, thank you so much. So mm, what are your parting shows to our Zimbabwean and African entrepreneurs? Mm, okay. Um, I want to talk to men first uh, before I talk to everybody. Uh, right. Yeah. So I would want to say that if you're a man, you need to understand something. Like in this world, we are living in a marketplace. It's a marketplace. Nothing is free for you. And if you don't see that this is a marketplace, then you are the product. And it's, it's, it's going to be hard for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So as a man... So it. Simple. Yeah. It's like, it's just a good one. No, things, you know, mm-hmm. but you know, you're taking as a cheat. Go to read it. Exactly. Yes. So I believe that as men, we have a, a huge role to play um, to make life easy, not only for our brothers, for our brothers or our mm-hmm. sisters or mothers, but the world at large. You see, for example, if you want to look into what's really going on in the economy, mm-hmm. right? We look into the communities and then we go further into the families. We get into the family. Mm. So it goes back to the man. Everything goes back to the man. So I believe that as men, uh, we have a role to play in terms of uh, how we can shape the future, not only for our children, not only for our mothers, but for other people that we have no interaction with. Like right now, you don't know who's watching, mm. you know? That's true. Yeah. That's so true. I believe that's, that's, that's that for men. Yeah. Okay, what about others? Then others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you believe in something, just uh, hold on to what you believe in. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm also a very spiritual person. I believe that, um, you know, Muari is there. Mm-hmm. He's real. And I've seen him work in my life, you know. But I also believe, just like Jesus Christ, when he came, he, he went into the marketplace. Mm-hmm. You know, his first disciple was mm-hmm. a fisherman. He had a fishing company, mm. second disciple, same thing, third disciple, you see what I'm saying? He were tax collectors and accountants in mm-hmm. his circle, mm-hmm. you see. So you have to be something, you know. Mm. So if you believe in something, this is what I'm seeing of my life, this is what I want to become, be that. Just don't give up. Mm, I still remember what, uh, is it uh, Apostle Trimo Mparinga? Mm-hmm. I think it was once said, um, Munuese, in, in, in Sean, I actually said, mm. Benzi, not crazy, but I think saga And what it means is paspana <laughs> bonfo and wait to tun to Thank you so much. <laughs> so thank yeah. you so much. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Blessed Madzwanyika for coming to this podcast. Mm-hmm. We learned a lot of things. I was also learning. And I hope everyone who was viewing this podcast and listening to this podcast was also learning. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you, our viewers. Thank you, our listeners, for watching and listening to this podcast. And continue supporting us by subscribing and sharing this podcast so that your friends, your relatives can actually watch this unique content, which can help your business. It can transform your life. So I hope that you're going to be subscribing. And I hope that... You continue supporting us. Until next time, it's Jerry out.